God. It's already moving. Happy view. Praise God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1. We've been dealing with the subject of salvation. Read for me Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Lest at any time we should drift away. That word let them slip in the Greek is drift away. It is not the word that slips, it is we that drift away. Or our focus is taken away. Or we begin to romance things that don't reveal Christ. And before you know it, your focus is off Christ. And you're beginning to look at other things that promise you some form of material gain. And when your focus leaves Christ and begin to look at material gains, it becomes difficult for you to stay, you know, within the confines of salvation. So, one of the things that the message of Christ does is it delivers you from materialistic greed. It takes that away from you. Because Jesus is more than enough. Jesus is more than enough. You can't add anything to Jesus. He is the totality of sufficiency. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, the word soteria, another word for it is the word sozo. Sozo means preservation. It means deliverance or safety or wholeness. It's a compound word used to teach many things in scripture. We have established that salvation is of God and salvation is for all. We've also established that God wants everyone to be saved. God wants everyone to be saved. Read for me that first Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 6. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. Be made for all men, yes, and it classifies. For kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. See salvation coming in there. Next verse. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. He will have all men to be saved. But it's not enough to be saved. But also to come to the knowledge of the truth. Next verse. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Yes, next verse. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So he doesn't only express his willingness and desire or his will to have all men to be saved. He gave himself as a ransom. He didn't only give us an intent. He created an enabling environment for this intention to be backed with action who will have all men to be saved then he gave himself a ransom okay so we see the prorismos of god in the proriso of god how many of you remember that's where we began from we see the prorismos of god in the proriso of god we're talking about the intent of god backed by action and we use two Greek words to, be, to bring that out. So Timothy says, pray for all men and those in authority. God wants all men saved. So that the plan of salvation is not for selective people. God wants all men to be saved. There is no preclusion. There is no selective salvation. There is no class of people that God has set aside to be saved. Who will have all men to be saved. And he gave himself a ransom for all men. Can somebody shout hallelujah so that's why paul said even kings in authority should be prayed for that they may be saved second peter chapter 3 verse number 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish not willing that any should perish any should perish but that all should come to repentance but that all not some all no preclusion everybody is part of god's salvation plan the price was paid for all not some people not willing that any shall perish look at the great commission mark 16 15. and he said unto them go ye into all the world all the world and preach the gospel to every creature every creature the gospel is for every creature is for everybody black white purple green yellow brown dark whatever color is for all men have all men to be saved preach the gospel to every creature 
All right. First John chapter two, verse two. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is the propitiation, the payment for sins. And this payment was done for the sins of the whole world. No preclusion. Everybody is part of God's salvation plan. For all men. God so loved the world. Propitiation for the sins of all men. Jesus didn't die for those in the church today. But for the whole world. John 3 16 for God so loved the world not the church the world that he gave his only begotten son so God loves the entire world everybody is part of God's salvation plan Romans chapter 10 verse 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved whosoever whosoever shall call there are no selected people whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be saved mark 16 15 16 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature next verse he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned he that believeth he that anybody he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved he anybody he that believeth so nobody precluded nobody included jesus makes salvation available to humanity he makes salvation available to humanity so we have seen that the plan of god for man is salvation that's the plan of God for man. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? He doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. God doesn't have pleasure. When a wicked man dies, it doesn't make God happy. He does not delight in the death of the wicked. He wants the wicked to be saved. So we have seen that the devil was not a pre-Adamic creature. We have seen from our teaching yesterday that the devil did not exist before time. That the devil was not there before Adam. We saw from the word of God that Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was to hobo ho. The earth was nothing, nothing to hobo ho. Nothing, nothing. Meaning, nothing existed before Genesis 1. So, all of God's creation took place in time. Everything God created, man, the planet, everything was created in time. But God is not part of time. God lives out of time and regulates time. Because even time was created by God. Are you here? So Satan didn't exist before Genesis 1. Now, again we establish that God didn't create Satan. God created Lucifer. But the fall of Adam was the rise of Satan. We already took time. We went through that in the previous services. So there was no time before Genesis 1. The only thing that will exist before time is infinite. And only God is the infinite one. Time began in Genesis. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. It means in the beginning. Before time began. God. Only God. In the beginning, before time began, God. Okay? John chapter 1 verse 3. All things were made by him and without him was not anything. All was made by him. Meaning nothing existed before Genesis 1. All things were made by him and without him was not any. Anything, any person, anything made that was made. All things were made by him. So everything was created in time. Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. For by him were all things created. By him were all things created. That are in heaven. Yes. And that are in earth. Yes. Visible and invisible. Yes. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Yes. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. For thou was created all things and for your pleasure they are and they were created. So all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. 
everything created for him every creation of god was for jesus and they were created by jesus so nothing will have been before genesis 1 because all things were made by him whether they be thrones dominion principality powers visible invisible they were all made in time am i teaching here yes they were all made in time everything was created in time thank you lord jesus i say thank you lord jesus satan was not created by god god never created satan that should be settled eternally god never created satan how do we know that genesis chapter 1 verse 30 and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so next verse and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good god saw everything that he has made and behold it was very good satan is not good talk more of very good so satan is not in the list of god's creation god never created satan satan was created by man the exchange between lucifer and adam gave rise to satan lucifer became satan by the transgression of adam so satan is a creation of man's disobedience are we in the house satan is a creation of man's disobedience please take note satan is not omnipresent and satan is not omniscient and satan is not omnipotent he cannot be everywhere he can only be in one place at one time because he was created the only person that can be everywhere is the omnipotent the omnipresent and the omniscient and we're talking about god satan is a creation of time therefore satan therefore created by man is limited he is not what people say he is people attribute so much to satan because illiteracy makes even the smaller things bigger than you what you don't know is bigger than you satan is myopic microscopic pinchomic Praise God. Teaching good tonight. So, Satan therefore tempted Adam. Satan tempted Adam. And Adam fell. It's called transgression. What was Satan's desire? To be in the place of Adam. He wanted to occupy the place of Adam. Because he saw the scope of power attributed to adam god created man and said let them have dominion over everything satan said i want to be like this guy i'm going to exalt my throne like he didn't say i'm going to exalt my throne to overthrow the most high he can't think of that he just said i'm going to exalt my throne like but remember the only person that was created like was adam lucifer's ambition was to take the place of adam and he got it by adam's transgression so lucifer achieved his vision in the transgression of adam what is transgression disobedience what was adam's disobedience adam's disobedience was not just eating the tree in fact the tree was not the problem of adam that tree was created by god and everything god created was very good so the problem of adam was not the tree the problem of adam was that he exercised sovereignty without recognizing the sovereignty of god god told him don't he disobeyed god and acted out of god's will that is what we call transgression when you function irrespective of god when you operate without recourse to god when you try to exercise sovereignty in the face of god that is sin it wasn't the tree that was the problem it was the transgression it was the disobedience if if without satan adam ate that tree 
in the absence of Satan. Authority wouldn't have been handed over to anybody. The authority will have still remained with Adam. You are not hearing me. It's not the tree that is the problem. It's the fact that he ate that tree outside of God's instruction. So when the second Adam came, he, he declared it from the beginning. I can of myself do nothing. What I see my father do, I do. So when Satan now said to the second Adam, bow down and worship me. The father was not bowing down, so the second Adam cannot bow down. Are we teaching here? And even without bowing down, he still got what he was looking for. He still got what he was looking for. He got the restoration of the fallen man. That today whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I thought somebody we shall thank you, Jesus. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God there in action. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. So we saw Adam as a function or Adam as a representative of a race. By one man, sin. By one man, righteousness. Romans 5, 17 to 19. By one man, sin. By one man, righteousness. So salvation is for all because one man, sin. One man, righteousness. It's not about an individual. It's about the progenitor of the race. The function, the functional head. Adam represents all of humanity in transgression. Jesus represents all of humanity in righteousness. Adam represents all of humanity in the fall, in sin, in death. Jesus represents all of humanity in obedience, in life, in righteousness. So the law of the spirit of life where? in christ jesus has set me free from what the law of sin and death where is the law of sin and death in the first adam all died and death by sin therefore all have sinned so first adam death sin failure woes on humanity second adam second adam life righteousness sanctification obedience the progenitor of the new kind of humanity that the planet never saw before the head of a race called the new creation man the man without a past only has a future the man without a generation only one generation away you are of god little children and have overcome them so you don't have a long list of generation it's just god and yourself whatsoever is born of god so your father is god you are not a grandchild you are a child because the genealogy is not long it's a short genealogy and when you look at god what is in god is what is in you why because of his own will begat he us by the word of truth that word word of truth is the sperma meaning sperm sperm means dna meaning the same dna in god is on your inside if he cannot fail i cannot fail why he gave back to me i share in his identity somebody shout i hear you okay sit down let's get a bit deep into this So when a man begins to talk to you about generational cause, it's fraud. He wants to milk your ignorance. It's nothing like that for a believer. Nothing like that for a child of God. You can't be born of God and be suffering from a generational cause from a human, from a human lineage. The day you got born again, you're disconnected. You are a chosen generation. You are brought out of darkness into genealogy changed your father died of stroke you can't die of stroke what is operating inside you stroke cannot handle it download tana somebody shout i house eternal life no generational cause no ancestral cause blessed christ hath redeemed us from the cause not just redeemed for a, a moment of time but redeemed eternally redeemed forever 
Somebody said, but Gideon went and pulled down the altar in his father's house. Gideon was not born again. Gideon lived under an inferior covenant with inferior promises. Gideon is not your model. You are not Gideon. You are a new creation after the image of him that created him. Born after the image of him that created him. Not after the image of Gideon. So look away from Gideon unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. Somebody shout, I hear you. Yeah, very important. Ezekiel corrected Moses. Because it was Moses who introduced generational cause in Exodus chapter 20. He said, anybody that will worship idols, his iniquity shall be punished unto the third and fourth generation of those who hate God. It was Moses who brought it to be. Exodus chapter 20 is where you ever see the first word generation occurs to the third and fourth generation. And under the same Old Testament, because revelation was progressive, when Ezekiel came on the scene, he said, no more shall this proverb be said in Israel. Under the same Old Testament, that thing was rusticated no more shall ezekiel 18 no more shall this proverb be said in israel that the fathers ate sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on age he said no as long as i live saith god that's the end of that nonsense from this day forward the soul that seen it it shall die jesus showed up and said that death i have tasted it on your behalf so now the gift of god is eternal life the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. I'm free. How free? Free forever. Have you ever asked yourself, the same people that were given that curse in Exodus chapter 20, who didn't even obey God, that curse didn't even happen to them. The children of Israel were told, they were the ones told on their way to promised land, that if they worship other gods, it will be punished the third and fourth generation. But they were worshipping idols in the wilderness, and their children entered the promised land. Their children entered the promised land. None of their children were left behind. All of them entered. That means that cause was not in effect. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Lift your right hand and shout, no cause. Only blessings. I'm swimming in the blessings of righteousness. I have the blessedness of righteousness. My sins are forgiven. I have the blessing on my life. I thought I would hear your amen. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus is God. And like we've said, salvation is for all. So we're going to look at Jesus, our man for salvation. Jesus, our man for salvation. We've established that Jesus is God and will be God. But he chose to become a man until a time. You didn't hear that. He chose to become a man until a time so jesus is god functioning as man so the concept of salvation therefore should be seen as jesus once we take away jesus from salvation we start looking at salvation as a personal thing. Salvation is Jesus. The concept of salvation is Jesus. When you take salvation from Jesus, that is when you start looking at salvation as your personal achievement. But as long as you look at salvation as a person, then there's nothing personal you have done, nothing personal you can do, and nothing personal you will ever do to earn, deserve, 
maintain, sustain, acquire, pay for salvation. You have to see salvation as a person. Jesus is salvation. The fall of Adam was not personal because he's the head of a race. So in his fall is the fall of his race. The same thing, the righteousness of Jesus is not personal because he's the head of a race. So his righteousness is our righteousness. Somebody say, I'm righteous by faith in Christ. Say it again, I'm righteous by faith in Christ. Now say, I'm righteous not because of me but because of him exactly it's not personal that's why there's nothing personal you can do to spoil it uh, because there was nothing personal you did to acquire it this thing is not in your hand this thing is in the hand of the head the progenitor of your race is in his hand salvation is of the lord there's nothing individualistic about salvation please that's very important because that's where all the confusion used to come from salvation is not personal while the decision to receive is personal but the grace to be saved is universal didn't he die for the sins of the world he died for the sins of the world Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 18 For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named Where is the family? Where is the location of the family? Heaven? Where are the members of the family? Are they here? Are you members of the family? Which family? the family of our lord jesus christ and as a member of the family of jesus where are your locations heaven so you operate two locations you operate two locations heaven and earth the family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man the riches of christ has nothing to do with material when you read and he say my god shall supply your needs according to his riches he's not talking of material things he said the riches of his glory is when you receive strength in the inner man so the riches of Christ is strength by the spirit in the inner man. When your spirit man is strengthened with might, that is the riches of Christ. Hmm. It's called unsearchable riches. The riches of Christ are not material. No, no. Hey, la bondola, kinanganga. Hey, Moses, when he was come of age, tigalatana, esteeming the riches of Christ than the treasures of Egypt, forsook Egypt. If it was material, he would not forsake Egypt because egypt is where the wealth of the world was so for him to forsake egypt means that the riches of christ had nothing to do with material wealth now keep that somewhere seller let's get back to <laughs> nothing material listen carefully nothing material is a sign of divine approval nothing nothing material nothing material so he now talks about the riches all right you're going to read for me again that verse when we stopped 
that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man yes part of the riches is that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith part of the riches again is that ye being rooted and grounded in love part of the riches again is may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, breadth length, length and depth, depth and, and height. height meaning that when the riches of christ are made available to you you can measure the length you can stand up here and measure the breadth you can calculate the depth and you can evaluate and arrive at a calculation for the height of God's love. He said you can know it. And we will know it this week. Because I'm going to open that up. Some say, oh, the love of God is beyond understanding. No, no, no. You can know. Am I teaching here? Yes. That's why he was praying. That you may know. That you may know. So it is knowable why Kebatana. jesus demystified god there is no more mystery about god all the mystery about god has been demystified when god became a man there's no more mystery that's why what you're still looking at me i have moved to another realm of revelation Jajuju jajaja hilamo nekinda hulananga ratona gaga no man know where the things that are in a man save kebatolaya save the spirit of a man that is in him so therefore the things of akela tana the things kebatonanga the things ileme nukuta the things jojoju balana the things of god know it no man save the spirit of god that is in him now you have not received the spirit of the world but the spirit of god that you may know the things that are freely what things the deep things so we have access to the depth of god's secrets and we can unveil it that's why we can measure the length we can measure the height we can measure the width we can measure the breadth of god's love it is no more a mystery jesus demystified it am i teaching here please sit down there's no more mystery it remains a mystery until revelation comes tell Ephesians chapter 3 we will come back to Ephesians chapter 1 3 verse 1 read for me for this cause yes I, Paul yes the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles verse 2 if he have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God yes is given to me to, to you word, word to you word yes how that by revelation how that by revelation how that by revelation he made known unto me what the mystery so when there is revelation there is no mystery mystery is the absence of revelation so paul prayed that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may have the spirit of wisdom and revelation because when revelation come mysteries are demystified how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge we are in the mystery of christ leave that thing by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. Paul called all his books few words. He called all those books few words. Books that preachers cannot even read and understand. He calls it few words. I don't blame him. He said, I was caught up to the third heaven. And I saw things that the mouth of a man is not qualified to talk about. So if he calls all his books few words, he knows what he's talking about. By revelation. 
he made known to me the mystery meaning there is no more mystery all mysteries are demystified in christ that's what we call jesus the explanation of all things the explanation of all things you can't see jesus and still be confused about god no the moment you see jesus you have seen god hey, why are you people doing me like this why are you doing this to me citizens why are you doing this to me don't you want me to follow my notes you are pulling me from my notes john 1 18 no man has seen god at any time at any time pause seller no man meaning adam never saw god adam was a man if jesus said no man had seen god at any time meaning from when time began no man saw god Elijah never saw God. Moses never saw God. They were all men. And Jesus said, No man had seen God where? At any time. Now, now, follow me. Follow me. John 5, 47. And the Father himself which had sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. You! He now turned to them. He said, Look at you people. You are talking about Abraham. My father, meaning God. None of you have ever seen his shape. And none of you has ever heard his voice. Meaning, even Moses didn't hear the voice of God. He said, at any time, meaning since time began, nobody saw God, nobody heard God. Why? They can't handle it so that's why hebrews now said god at sundry times and in diverse manners spake to the fathers in and by the prophets separate revelations separate times in portions of truth here and there scattered around and that's why the old testament must be interpreted in the light of Christ. You don't take everything hook, line, and sinker. Because none of them saw God. Meaning some things they said about God were just assumptions. Because you can't give exact knowledge of somebody whom you have never seen. Or heard. Teaching good. Now watch. John 14.6 read for me jesus saith unto him yes i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me no man next verse if ye had known me ye should also have known my father if you also. had known me you should have known my father also read on and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him so now jesus says from now that i'm talking to you you have now seen god am i talking to somebody here no man saw him at any time but from now since you have seen me because i am the father manifest jesus demystifies god shout i hear you now watch read for me the next verse philip says unto him lord show us the father and it suffices philip us. said look jesus don't play with our intelligence stop this thing you're talking how can you tell us that we have seen him where have we seen him where have we seen him where have we seen him and in their mind they say he cannot be you where are we seeing look if it's a joke stop joking with our intelligence these are spiritual matters in case you're not aware look jesus wait stop joking show us the father and we promise you we shall be satisfied we will no more trouble you again it sufficed us put the next verse read for me the next verse jesus says unto him have i been so long time with you and yet has thou not known me philip you don't know me philip he that had seen me had seen the father 
And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? I am the Father. Which other Father do you want to see? Jesus is saying, I am the end of discussion. When you see me, you have seen the Father. Meaning all of the Father is revealed in Christ. When you see Jesus, you have seen the Father. Somebody shout, I see Jesus. Why do you see Jesus? Because you are in him. So if the Old Testament people didn't see God, I have seen God, I should be able to help interpret what they were confused about. If they never saw God and I have seen God in Christ, then where they made mistakes, I should be able to explain because now I understand the limitation of their knowledge. So when you hear them say, I am God, I kill and I make a life, there's a mistake there. There's a mistake there. I have seen God and God didn't kill. Where did I see God? In Christ. When he was on earth, did he kill anybody? No. So God never kills. Rather, he gives life to the dead. Why? I have seen. I first John 1 5. Again. Then yes. is the message. Is the message. Stop there. This then is the message, not a message. This is what? The message. This is the message. Eh? Hey go, no, go, 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 go. Which we have heard of him. This is the message we have heard of him. And declare unto you. What is the message? That God is light, and in him is no darkness. That at all. God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Death is darkness. So God does not have death. Poverty is darkness. So God does not have poverty. Sickness is darkness. So God does not have sickness. Sin is darkness. So God does not have sin. Stagnation is darkness. God does not have stagnation. And you are in him. What he doesn't have, I don't have. He doesn't have darkness, I don't have darkness. This is the message. This is the message. I'm teaching good here. This is the message that we have heard of him that God is light, and in him. There is no darkness. Zatola ya. So everything that makes life difficult for you is not God. And you have the right to resist the devil. And what will happen? Neither give room to the devil. Zatola ya. As your amen will slap the devil. Whatever does not look like God I command it to expire. Expire 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 somebody shout i receive revelation i know the length the width the breadth the height of god's love by revelation i thought i would hear a good amen please sit down let me round up this tonight so that Ephesians chapter 3 where all of you took me on a journey Ephesians 3 14 take us back there again for this cause yes I bow my knees unto the father of our Lord Jesus Christ yes of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named yes that he would grant you according to the riches of the his riches glory, of his glory yes to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man yes that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Yes. That ye, being rooted and grounded in love, yes. may be able to comprehend with all saints yes. what is the breadth, breadth and length, length and depth, depth and, height. and height. Next verse. And to know the love of Christ. And to know. That's the beauty of Bible study. To know the love of Christ. And what happens when you come to that knowledge? That ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. When you come to that knowledge, 
you are filled with the maximum load the fullness of god is maximum load in the greek that you may carry the maximum load of god shibalana that you may be filled with all the fullness of god when you come to that place of knowledge the width of god's love the breadth the length so let me give you an idea let's begin with the width of god's love what is the width of god's love the width of god's love is grace grace hebrews chapter 2 verse 3 read for me how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard so him. So great salvation. The width of God's love is grace. The width, the breath is grace. Now this is how somebody will define grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's how somebody defines grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Meaning that grace can only be seen from Jesus to Jesus. Once you define grace outside Jesus, you have fallen into error. Grace can only be seen from Jesus to Jesus. Once you define grace outside Jesus, you have fallen into error. So this is how I want to look at grace. Simply what Christ has done. Grace is what Christ has done. Now watch this. Grace is not cheap. Somebody said, I don't like these preachers who preach cheap grace. I have good news for you. You are watching, ma? watch well grace is not cheap because for grace to be cheap means it is expensive because what may be cheap for you may be expensive for another cheap is relative depending on who it is applicable to So the good news is that grace is not cheap. So I have scattered your balloon. Ah, all this, you know these grace preachers. This, this, and you see small boys calling people like us, new generation. When I started preaching, some of them were not born physically. So for a small boy on Facebook, because he has the ability to type something. When fathers like us are talking. Leave that in. Grace is not cheap. You know all these doctors that mean at them. They are just preaching cheap grace. Sorry, you are not quoting us right. Grace is not cheap. The good news is that grace is free. We are not preaching cheap grace. We are preaching free grace. If it's cheap, it means some people can get it, some people cannot get it. What we are saying is that the one we are preaching. If you are with me on the same boat, jump and shout free grace. One to three, four people tell them grace is free, grace is free. Free grace, free grace. is free meaning that it is for everybody even if you cannot afford house rent you will afford grace grace is brand new but given free of charge amazing grace how sweet zatola naganga as your amen will slap the devil the day of your efforts are over enjoy free grace enjoy free grace 
enjoy total grace somebody shout i hear i hear now but the freedom of grace the freedom of grace is not free but it is free grace is not free to the one who acquired it but it has been made free to the consumer the person who acquired this grace gave his life for it but the person it has been offered to nothing is demanded from him the grace of god the grace of god not of works lest any man should boast then he now added it is the gift of god the grace of god lift your right hand i declare and i decree over this building whatever does not look like what christ has accomplished on your behalf everything jumping around you that is not of god every embarrassment and shame around you every disgrace attacking and intimidating you as your amen will come like thunder i command it to expire 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 expire, expire. i decree that you will fulfill your days you'll be strong and you'll be well in the name of jesus lift your right hand and shout i am a believer i am a believer, I am a believer. I am a believer. it is written he that believeth shall not be ashamed i am a believer i shall not be ashamed it is written the righteous shall be far from oppression i am the righteousness of god in christ i am far from oppression i will not be oppressed i cannot be oppressed i shall not be oppressed you know poverty is an oppression you know sickness is an oppression how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth who went about healing all those that were oppressed but he says the righteous shall be far from oppression every yoke of oppression near your territory i command it to go far from your territory you're free from oppression you're blessed going out blessed coming in the work of your hands are blessed open your two hands and look at them very clear clearly look at your two hands now shout it at the top of your voice no more empty hands say it two more times one more time look at that hand look at that hand i decree as your amen will come like thunder that hand is full of all good things full of all good things full of all good things favor from the west favor from the south favor from the east favor from the north favor round about favor from your enemies they don't like you but they will show you favor they hate your face and in their hatred they will move you forward if your amen is louder you are blessed beyond the cause lift your right hand and shout i am free from any form of cause no generational cause i am a carrier of generational blessings i carry the blessings of jesus christ blessed in the city blessed in this field blessed going out blessed coming in my body is blessed my body is blessed my body is blessed my body is blessed you say i will bless your bread and your water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee from this night i decree as you eat and drink it will be held to your body he said my son attend to my words incline your ears to my sayings for they are life to those who find them say i have found the word it is life to me say i have life i have the son death cannot stay where life is i thought i will hear your amen
and I decree the remaining days of this week you will swim in celebration you will swim in testimonies if you believe I receive it clap, jump, scream, make some noise, celebrate far from oppression far from oppression far from sickness far, far, far and you know what the Bible says? He says the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Remembrance for how long? For, for how long? Somebody shout, I can never be forgotten. Say those that forgot me. They are remembering me now. I am in everlasting remembrance. You will never be forsaken. You will never be forgotten. You will never be abandoned. You will never be forsaken. You will never be forgotten. You will never be abandoned. You will never be forsaken. You will never be forgotten. You will never be abandoned. You will never be forsaken. You will never be forgotten. You will never be abandoned. If your amen is louder, you will never be forsaken. You will never be forgotten. You will never be abandoned. You will never be forgotten. You will never be forsaken. You will never be abandoned. If your amen is louder, you are in everlasting remembrance. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a word today. Please don't adjust yourself and don't go away. Just stay with me patiently. You know, the word of God comes to give us light and the entrance of his life 